So here we go, folks. This is probably one of my favorite topics. I, I love just thinking about this subject, believe it or not. It might seem a little bit incredible <laughs> that somebody can actually enjoy uh, thinking about resumes and job interviews and post interviews and, and all this stuff. But it really is just part and parcel of professional communication. I mean, this is, uh, for a lot of people, the first real professional communication uh, that they do. You know, it's just the getting a job, uh, writing a resume, doing a job interview. It's, it's just critical stuff. And yet, you'd be surprised how many people never take any courses where they teach you about any of this stuff. They don't even know, they've never even written a resume. Or they've only done resumes for you know, little local jobs uh, to put themselves through school. You know, much less really dialing down into uh, uh, the etiquettes, the etiquette of in job interviews and the like. Uh, so it's such a critical topic. Uh, so it's it's just useful for anybody uh, to learn about. And remember too, as a professional communicator, uh, you'll be teaching this stuff at some point, right? Or at least uh, you know helping others. Uh, so you want to be thinking about these these concepts and and what they mean, how to be effective an effective communicator in this very specific situation. Because uh, what we'll find is that the same set of skills, the same sorts of questions and concerns you'll have in the job interview or writing a resume, that's going to apply across the board uh, to all the rest of the professional communication uh, that you'll be doing. So this is it's a really good foundation for a professional communicator. You know, I always say, if you know how to write a really great resume, <laughs> you, you, you already know like 99% of what you'll need. Uh, you know, everything else will follow from that. If you, but it's not as easy as it might, might sound. So uh, let's delve into it. Now, so we're going to be talking about resumes, applying uh, for jobs, uh, the job interviews, and then starting the job on the right foot. All right. Uh, so resumes. What is the purpose of a resume? I, I always ask that. You know, professors love to ask these kind of questions. It seems so uh, easy, uh, but you know, there must be some trick to it, right? It's a trick question. got to be. So the student raised raise a hand, says, uh, well, you write a resume to get a job. I always say, eh. <laughs> no, that's uh, the purpose of the interview, right? This, The resume is just something you write to get that interview. You know, this is like the preliminary thing. Uh, so if they look at the resume, like what they see, you, may, you meet all the parameters, the qualifications, uh, you might get that job interview. So think about it that way, right? You're just trying to get to the next level. You don't have to... Put everything there is to know about you <laughs> on the resume. <laughs> Just enough to get to that next step. Uh, so that's the critical thing. And I, I like this. I had to look all around to find a resume I actually liked. Because unfortunately, there's just a, you know, everybody, it's kind of like kids. You know, if you have any kids, if you have a baby, <laughs> everybody thinks they're an expert <laughs> on how you ought to raise your baby. Uh, your kid, of course, drives uh, parents crazy. Uh, same thing with a resume. Like everybody's got an opinion on it. Everybody thinks they know, you know, how to do one, or, or thinks that they think they know how to do it. So you get all this conflicting advice and bad advice out there, frankly. Now, always, you know, and Pierce and I agree. It's one reason I like Pierce is because we're on the same level, same wavelength, I guess, when we're talking about this stuff. Uh, just to keep it simple. I mean, the goal you shouldn't try to be fancy and decorative and have wing things or whatever they call those things all over it and you know <laughs> this elaborate thing it just should be the, the main goal i think is just to present your qualifications in the easiest way possible uh, so that when that employer or hr person whoever it is they're going through the stack of resumes they're saying okay we have to have a we said that we have to have a bachelor's degree for this position uh, so that might be the first thing do you have a bachelor's degree or do you not have a bachelor's degree because if you don't have one uh, they can just you know toss that resume aside move on to the next one and they kind of want to have lunch <laughs> they kind of want to go home <laughs> uh, they're humans uh, so you make it easy to find that pertinent information uh, if they say they want if they say they require uh, three years of experience in the field then i don't want them to have to look all over that resume trying to find whether i've got that experience or not it should be really easy to find it and, and understandable and so they can say yes this person is qualified this person has the 
you know, has the credentials. Let's call them in for the interview. And by the way, uh, I want to call this person. Uh, yes, this is a great, inter uh, great resume. Where's the phone number? Uh, where's the email? And you notice very smartly, it's, you know, I would say it's common sense, but it's really not. <laughs> I get, get the wackiest stuff, but um, you want to make this as easy as possible for them to find uh, how to contact you, what's your phone number. They, they might email instead. So however it is uh, they want to contact you, you should make that easy for them. Do not put this, you know, one thing I don't like about this resume, you know, I don't, this is just an example, I guess, but the phone number is kind of small. You know, and it's, I don't know about you, what age you are or what your vision is like, but I notice as I get older, I kind of get, it gets harder and harder to see that really small printing. So if anything, I would say, you know, I would have that phone number and the email address a little bit bigger than that, at least step it up a notch, you know, because I really don't want them dialing the wrong number. <laughs> uh, Pierce's tips, uh, you know, limit it to one page. You know, somebody's probably going to say, well, I've, you know, this doesn't apply to me. I'm a you know, senior level executive management guru, whatever. Uh, so you're going to have a longer resume. Like, well, that's fine. We're not talking out here about senior level positions. Uh, we're talking about entry level, you know, that first job in a new career. And so basically you're looking at a fresh college graduate without a ton of experience already, or at least not a ton of a relevant experience to the job. So really, you, you don't want that to be two or three pages long. Uh, you want to keep it simple, or, or keep it a short one page, and that will also force you to really think about how to avoid being wordy and being concise and uh, basically not wasting your time. Uh, two, avoiding those fancy templates. Yes, do not repeat, do not download one of those resume builder application things. It's just going to give you this big wonky file and about half the time it won't format right and you just can make your life miserable if you just keep it simple that will help you in lots of ways one is it's just easier not to use one of those uh, wizards uh, but two when you get the finished file it will probably upload as a PDF format uh, basically if you type this up in Microsoft Word let's say there's a save as feature so you want to say save as a PDF file and what that does for you, it makes it so that what's on your screen, the way the document looks on your screen, will look the same on their screen. At least that's the uh, idea. If you just load the, uh, if you just upload the docx format, it might mess up your headings and your fonts and, and other things. And this, I would say, this problem here gets a lot worse if you did use one of those super complicated resume things with all the pictures and the fancy uh, formatting. Because what happens sometimes, this gets uploaded into an automated system, and it it's, tries to get rid of all that extra stuff, and it might end up just looking like garbage on their screen. So just another reason not to do that. Uh, three, proofread this thing. I say just proofread it as though your job depends on it, because it does. <laughs> you know, uh, I'll never forget, you know, I had a student in, this, in a 332 class one time, and uh, she was applying for a job as a proofreader and, you know <laughs> and uh, you, you think you're going to think I'm lying uh, but her resume was just full of typos and I just thought my goodness you know <laughs> what are we, we are lost as a society you know uh, my goodness uh, <clears throat> you know she actually got the job too if you can believe that anyway uh, you definitely don't want to make that mistake. Uh, go through it carefully. Uh, read it upside down if you have to. I always just say get some friends to look at it. Get your mom, your dad, whoever, your family members to look at it. Uh, really just see, is, are there typos on this? You know, is, is it worded well? Is it confusing or anything like that? Uh, because basically if the, if the employer is looking at this resume and it's got a bunch of mistakes on it, uh, they're going to assume you're not very good at your job. You know, you're reckless or you're careless. Uh, you're not really, you don't have good attention to detail. Uh, so it's not going to work out for you. So definitely take the extra minute or two to really proofread it. I always like to say, you know, when you're finished with a resume, don't just send it off right away. You know, try to wait a day or two, maybe even a week, and, and come back and look, look at it again because sometimes things will leap out at you that weren't 
uh, visible to you before. And then the professional sounding email address is again very important. You know, one thing that she doesn't mention here, you probably realize you probably shouldn't have something obscene or criminal sounding or <laughs> childish, <laughs> juvenile uh, for your email address. But one thing I would add to this is just keep it, it's better to have a shorter one and something that's not hard to spell or hard to type in because they might be typing this into a phone or, or who knows what. So if it's a really, really long email, uh, that might, you know, it might get a, you might miss the email, right? They might accidentally send it to the wrong place. So try to keep something memorable and easy uh, to type in is my advice. Uh, yeah, we covered this already. Uh, so many people, for whatever reason, you know, they see all these examples online of resumes and they think, well, they didn't put their education up top. You know, their education was on the bottom. So I should put mine on the bottom too. Yeah, don't do that. And the reason for that it's a little bit of a smart alecky reason, I guess. You know, I just like to, <laughs> you know, people to remember this, though. Uh, there's a reason you're in college. There's a reason that you're paying all this money and you're taking all this time uh, to get this degree. And that is because you think it will make a difference, right? This college, and it will. You know, if that, if, uh, you know, a lot of employers are impressed and, and they want people who have recently graduated graduated college because they feel like those people will have the most cutting edge training, uh, the latest research, you know, the latest software, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's a good reason to put it on top. Now, I always get somebody who says, well, I don't think it's that important. I've got all this experience, or I've got all this or all that. And so uh, I always just say, well, if that's the case, just drop out. <laughs> so you don't need the college degree, obviously. Uh, so if it's not worth putting on top, I honestly don't know why you're here. You know, that, that's a, a bit facetious, but that's just kind of how I feel about it, and I've never heard an employer tell me anything otherwise. Uh, unless, you know, again, if you're somebody that's been out of college for a long time, that's different. Uh, but most of the time, that's probably 99% of the time, uh, you should put your education on top uh, and include any kind of certificates or training or licenses or anything else that uh, shows that you have, a, you know, you're qualified. Uh, two is emphasizing the results and the achievements uh, that you have uh, achieved, and not just what you had to do or your duties. So uh, somebody might, let's just say you worked at the right place um, as a writing center here. And a lot of people would just put writing center tutor, a writing center consultant, and they would just leave it at that. Uh, and then, or they might put writing center consultant and then tutored students in grammar and mechanics and uh, you know whatever the case may be. Well, that tells me what you did, uh, but it's not really making you look very good. Or it's not really giving any evidence that you were good at this job. Uh, so you want to think about any way that you could show uh, that not only could you do the job, but you could do it well. You know, there's something about your performance that stands out. We'll, we'll get more into that in a second. But that's really, really where you want the emphasis. Not just that you can do it, but that you can do it well. Um, three, yeah, avoid these unnecessary sections. My goodness. Uh, so many times I've had to uh, uh, criticize these resumes because they have these, for whatever reason, these beefy sections on top. They call it something like objective statement. And they'll have like a big paragraph right at the top. It's just nothing but fluff, nothing but wordy stuff. It doesn't really add anything, doesn't really show that the, <laughs> it's just kind of a waste of time and space. Uh, so I said, don't even think about putting that, something like that on there. Or if you do, keep it very minimal. Uh, you definitely don't want a half-page <laughs> objective statement <laughs> at the top of this resume. Um, let's see what else is there. Uh, yes, um, remember that the resume itself, a resume is literally a summary. It's a summary of your experience and your education and your, basically your professional experience. Uh, so if you need a summary of a summary, probably means you've got some wordiness <laughs> you've got some fluff <laughs> you know you need to go back in and think about cutting some of this down uh, so that it will fit uh two my yeah my probably my biggest pet peeve uh, i don't mean for this to sound negative okay i'm trying to help <laughs> but it's just so many people feel like they need to make this uh section on there or list somewhere where they, they say skills and then they just 
have this big line of jargon or, uh, you know, things like communication, <laughs> reading, writing, <laughs> but they won't provide any kind of evidence that they actually have those skills. Zero. So just, I'm supposed to just take their word that they have the skills. So I always, I really discourage that. I say, don't do that. You know, instead of doing that, see if you could go back and look at your experience where you're talking about your jobs, you're talking about your schooling, your or your, your volunteer work, whatever the case may be, and see if you can use those sections to show, you know, that you have those skills, not just the, and not just tell uh, the employer that you have those skills. So in creative writing, they talk about show, don't tell. Same thing with the resume. You want to show uh, that you have these skills, not just tell them that you do. Now, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. I call it fluff. Uh, you know, that's a nice word uh, for it. <laughs> but you just tell me what this sounds like. Imagine that you are running a business and you're going to hire somebody. You're going to pay them and you don't have unlimited funds. Uh, or you're an, an HR person and you don't want to look bad by hiring somebody that doesn't work out. Uh, but then you get this. I have strong communication skills, all caps. I am a great communicator and people person with truly excellent verbal and writing skills. I can communicate extremely well, exclamation point. Trust me on this, exclamation point. Okay, it's a little bit silly. So it's, it's, Actually, it's a lot silly. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but the, this is basically what I see on just countless examples. Somebody's just saying, they're telling me they got these skills, but they don't. But if you look at this, do they actually give you any evidence other than just their word that they have these skills. See, they, they don't. <laughs> it's just they, they're saying it over and over. They're repeating it, but repetition is not, is not evidence. Now, what would be some evidence? Well, again, we could go back. We could look at our education section. And you could put, instead of just the university name, like a lot of people just put St. Cloud State University, and they don't put anything else there. Instead of doing that, you know, you could say, I majored in professional communication and maybe even uh, put a GPA 4.0 GPA you know assuming that's true uh, it looks pretty good right it looks like you did major in something to do with communication and you earned a degree in that and you got a good GPA so you know you probably do have good communication skills uh, or you would have flunked right <laughs> or the GPA would be a lot lower <laughs> and uh, if we look at this experience one so right place consultant tutored over 100 students in writing created six worksheets to help citations and avoiding plagiarism. Uh, so there, again, some very concrete details there. And if they wanted to, they could call up the right place reference. Say, you know, how about this Barton? You know, is he a tutor there? Yes. Does this sound right? Did he tutor 100 students? Yes. Uh, hopefully they'd, they'd also say, yeah, he was, he was a good tutor too. Uh, so that would reinforce this idea. But you notice these are details that you could verify. So we could we could find out if this is true. It's not just opinion. You know, you're asserting facts. Uh, or maybe you publish a short story in the literary magazine. A very impressive achievement. You know, I, I, I'm amazed. I, I sit down and work with students, and we'll be talking about resumes, and uh, they won't have anything listed for, like, achievements. And then they'll say, well, I, you know, there, I did publish a short story. And <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you published a story and you, and you didn't even put it on your resume? I mean, that, that's, wh what are you thinking? <laughs> you know, it's a big achievement. You definitely want to uh, put those. And, and, you know, be thinking about ways you might uh, impress employers or things you should work on or at least attempt uh, so you have some pretty impressive stuff to put on your resume. Or volunteer work. You know, some people, I, I don't know where they get this idea, but they say, well, should I put it on? Should I, should I mention a job that was just voluntary where I didn't get paid? And I say, yeah. you know, I guess if you've got a whole bunch of other stuff that's more impressive, sure. Uh, but otherwise, you know, why not? It's, it's perfectly uh, reasonable to do this. You know, this person was a, taught in an after-school reading program uh, for 15 kids with learning disabilities. I mean, to me, that really shows some strong communication skills. And, and really even like good ethics, good moral compass, right? They're, they're volunteering. It's like they've got some good, uh, you know, life principles, if you will. And so certainly relevant. Certainly, I mean, why not put it on the, the resume? Uh, <clears throat> some other examples, I get this a lot. I get a lot of uh, you know, folks who major in computer 
type work. And they'll have this, again, this line says something like skills, and they'll say C++, Java, blah, blah, blah. No context, no detail, just this stupid list. And always, I just get angry about it, <laughs> really. I, don't get, I try not to get mad at the student, but I just feel like, you know, this is, we're not, re we're letting people down by letting them think this is okay, uh, just to have this, this list without any detail. Uh, I always compare this to like, if you, if I told you I uh, have a skill in guitar, I said, yes, I have guitar. <laughs> <laughs> now, one question you might wonder, what does that actually mean? Because if you think about it, it could mean a lot of different things. It could just mean I happen to own a guitar. It could mean that I know how to uh, put the strings on one and tune it. Uh, it could mean that I could play Stairway to Heaven. Uh, it could mean that I know how to play any song, that I can read music and sight read it and play like at a classical <laughs> professional level. <laughs> it could mean I'm in a, a band uh, making big money playing guitar. I mean, you just don't know. It's, all you see is one word, guitar. It could mean anything. Uh, and it's the same with this business. So what I always say is don't even think about this, uh, just leaving it with one word. Uh, instead, try to think about how you might ground this either as part of your education or as part of your experience so that they can see what you can do with it. Uh, so here's some examples about C++. So took two courses in C++ at SCSU, earned an A in both. Uh, so at least that's some kind of evidence. You know, you took the courses, you made a good grade. That says more than just C++. Or uh, programmed a word matching game uh, called <laughs> Floppy Husky in Java. And then they got the link there where you can actually download this game and, and see what it looks like. And they received 50 bucks, or $50 uh, from fans of the game. So I've talked to, again, at this point, probably hundreds of game developers, and they just said this to me over and go go back and watch the Matt Chats. <laughs> and, you know, every one of them says, I don't really care about what you say you can do. I want to see what you can do. You know, so if you've got any kind of finished product, any uh, finished project, even if it's a little game or just even a document design or a design document, just anything you've actually finished, that will be a lot more persuasive uh, than just rattling off a bunch of uh, skill keywords. So if you're not sure what to put, uh, you know, you can think about how you've used that skill. Did somebody pay you to use that skill? That's the best. That's like the gold standard. So if I say I could play guitar, and then the next thing out of my mouth is I get paid uh, thousands of dollars to play guitar on studio for, at the studio, uh, hey, the guy probably knows how to play guitar. People are paying him. <laughs> if, on the other hand, it's, uh, well, I just kind of play around at home. Uh, I've never made any money at it. A little bit less impressive, right? Um, internships, it's another uh, thing. You know, you, you may or may not get paid, but, you know, at least somebody awarded you the internship, so it says something. Of course, references are great, recommendations for people. Uh, again, anything that was graded, if you got a grade on it, that's some proof, right? Because the professor won't give you an A on a bad project. And so at least it says you can do it in a context of a, of a, of a class. Uh, certifications, volunteer work, uh, portfolios. You know, this is The portfolio is what we're trying to work up to in this program. So that when you are out there applying for jobs, you can say, look at, look at what I've done. You know, look at these projects. They, they really show that I have the skills. Uh, okay. So let's talk a little bit about looking for the job. Yes, if you don't have a job, you should look for one like it is your full-time job. So a lot of people, it's not very pleasant work, right? It, it, it can be, I guess, kind of exciting, but it can quickly become kind of dreary, especially if you get rejected for jobs. You get very discouraged uh, with this, but you really have to just keep putting yourself out there. Uh, she recommends applying for three to four jobs a day, I think, which is not bad. You know, the, the more you, it's a numbers game, ultimately, folks. I mean, uh, she even, she talks a little bit in here about how looking for a job is like a, the dating scene, <laughs> looking for a date. <laughs> and I think that's probably true <clears throat> in the sense that uh, you probably know people that they, you know, they want to date a certain person, let's say, and, and that person isn't interested in them. Uh, so they, they're just wasting all this time and, 
resources and they're getting their heart broke <laughs> broken <laughs> or maybe even getting in trouble with the law because they, they just don't have enough sense to say okay that's not working out uh, i need to expand my uh you know horizons here a little bit and, and stop going after that uh, person who's not interested in me uh, same thing with a job uh, right if you keep applying and uh, you know uh, pestering somebody <laughs> an employer <laughs> who's already rejected you uh, you're not really going to get anywhere you know that's not a good strategy uh, with the job hunt uh, what you want to do is have a lot of leads a lot of different possibilities and you're just sort of you know testing the waters everywhere you're trying to get a bite of what you're trying to do and you're not so picky about which job exactly uh, you know you want to have a lot of options on the table uh, so that when you start to get accepted you know people want to hire you uh, then you've got some options right? you say well I could take this job I can also take this job and there's this job you know it's a lot better situation to be in uh, so just remember that you know you're applying for lots of different jobs not just the one or two uh, that look ideal um, okay uh, keeping a record is very important Again, if you, especially if you're applying to three jobs, let's just say it was three jobs a day. I mean, wow, that's going to add up quick. So you're going to want to keep track of when did you apply. Maybe you, don't, <laughs> you might forget you applied uh, for that. So you want to keep it somewhere in a record, a document, so you can see when it was. Uh, uh, did you hear back? What's the contact info, etc. cetera? Uh, she also talks in here about LinkedIn. Again, very valuable resource. I mean, I don't want to require you to create a LinkedIn profile as part of the class, but I really encourage you to do it. Uh, and she gives advice in here that's that's good. Uh, you know, there's a place to put a photo. You might not want to put a photo. You know, that's up to you. Uh, but if you do, just make sure it's a professional one, you know, suit and tie. Uh, LinkedIn is a professional, a, a professional uh, network, uh, so you'll want to look the part. Uh, now, another resource, of course, uh, Pierce doesn't mention this because it's limited to uh, St. Cloud State students, or at least students in this class. Uh, there's a, a service on campus called the Career Center. And I got a link to it here, stcloudstate.edu slash career center. Uh, so I want you to go there, check this site out, because it is awesome. I mean, they got so much stuff here to help you. Uh, find that job and, and get hired and they'll, they'll do mock interviews. I mean, they just do it all. They're incredible. Uh, and yet, I get a lot of students who never go there or they uh, don't even know about it. Uh, so we're going to just stop here for a few minutes. Go check the site out and then come back and tell me about what you think about their services and how they might be useful to you. Okay, so some other job hunt tips that are pretty good. Um, one is to set up email alerts. So what happens there? You get to a site like Indeed.com or I don't know if Craigslist has one. A lot of people forget about Craigslist, by the way, but they have a, a job uh, section on there as well. Often used it. Uh, but anyway, if you uh, when you look when you pull up those jobs, there'll be a little button there somewhere that says notify or notifications or alert, something like that. Uh, so what happens if you click that? It will email you. Uh, if there are other new jobs that pop up on the network uh, that have something to do with that, that pertain. So a very useful thing to do. Um, if you don't, yeah, if they're not hiring at the moment, or maybe you're not interested in applying right now, but it, eventually you would like to work for a company, you can do what's called an informational interview. And this is something I'd, I require in my 332 class, uh, one of the assignments in there is I want the students to uh, call up a company or uh, a business that they're interested in, work, a company that they want to work for, and just tell them, you know, look, I'm a student here at St. Cloud State. I'm majoring in blah, 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 and I would like to uh, know more about, what, you know, how do I get a job for your company? What, what sort of skills do you look for in new uh, hires? Uh, what can I do to give myself an edge? You know, that sort of thing. And a lot of the times they're, they're happy to talk to you. They actually enjoy it talking to people, students, you know, because they can, uh, you know, give you like very specific advice and, and who knows, that's like a connection, right? So when, if you, you know, get to know this person in the context of this interview, who knows, you might actually apply and be hired by the person when you get out of college. You know, that may or may not happen, but it's a possibility, right? And you, and you get really good information that way. And so it's certainly something you could do, even if just for your own uh, benefit. Um, 
let's see this last one is uh yeah uh, it's kind of a little bit wordy of a point but the idea is <clears throat> sometimes you're looking at job ads and you see they want a major or they want uh, so many years of experience or this or that but what you want to do is is look do they uh how they word that because uh, there's a difference between saying we require X, Y, and Z. We re let's just say they require a master's degree. So that means if you don't have a master's degree, there's no use in applying. Uh, if, on the other hand, they just say desired or preferred or uh, ideally, <laughs> something like that, that means that they, they still might consider you even if you don't have that uh, element. Uh, so you know, pay attention to that. Don't just rule out a job uh, just because it says they prefer something or they would like to have these things uh, because there's a difference between absolutely having to have it and it would be nice, but... Okay, so let's take a little break here. Uh, watch some uh, Mike Rowe. He's uh, known for a show called Dirty Jobs. So he's got a kind of a unique opinion, I think, about passions and opportunity. He talks to a lot of students as well about careers a uh, different take uh, than you might get elsewhere. So I think it'd be fun just to watch his uh, little clip here and then just come back and tell me what you think about it. Okay, so some tips about applying for jobs. Always follow the instructions to the letter. Uh, this is key. Uh, you know, if they tell you they want it formatted a certain way or they want a cover letter or whatever the case may be, you just have to make sure you follow it. Because again, if you don't follow it and you just do your own thing or you just upload the same old stuff you've been uploading everywhere else, that might be enough right there to cost you that interview. And so be careful with that. Uh, the business with the cover letter, uh, sometimes you see they want to, sometimes they'll call it a personal narrative. Uh, sometimes they will call it a cover letter, application letter, or something like this. Uh, they basically just want something in prose or writing, not bullet points. Uh, you know, they want something in paragraph form uh, that kind of tells them about who you are and what you're, you know, what you want to bring to the company and so on. Uh, so you could just put that as part of the PDF with your resume. Uh, three, if, yeah, if there's any way to preview, uh, so sometimes before you go to submit your final application, it'll say, would you like to preview uh, the document? So you should always say yes. <laughs> uh, Look it over, make sure everything looks okay. Make sure you didn't submit the wrong file. You know, that happens sometimes. Just double, you know, just a few seconds just to make sure that's, you know, legitimately what you want to send. Uh, you'll be thankful if you correct an error. And then, of course, double checking that contact info. You know, make sure they can get in touch with you. You know, this is something I, I haven't ever even thought about this, but this is, this is uh, critical. Um, Make sure that your email and your voicemail are both working as intended, right? So the, the voicemail can get full. You know, I've had this happen. I'm trying to call somebody and it says the voicemail is full, and I can't even leave a message on there. You know, that would just be devastating. They, they're probably not going to call you back uh, again and again trying to get through to you. So definitely check this. Make sure that voicemail is, is clear, you know, at least to, enough room to get a couple of uh, voicemails. <laughs> and the same thing with the email. Uh, but probably the problem there is that it, sometimes uh, these email programs are set up to automatically send email into a junk or spam in some folder like that. So you just want to, you know, as you're searching for jobs, you know, to, to occasionally open up that junk folder, that spam folder, and just make sure it's, again, legitimately spam and not actually the letter that says, uh, you're invited to interview with us. <laughs> Okay, some quick tips about interviews. Uh, making sure you're at the right place at the right time is critical. Uh, if you can, go there the day before, you know, and, you, and if especially sometimes if you're like me, I grew up in the country, rural community, and then moved to the city for the job, and I, had, I didn't have any idea about the rush hour traffic. So that's something that I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> Uh, but you do want to ask and make sure, even though it looks close by, uh, if, you're, if, if they want you there at 9 o'clock, okay, uh, there might be an hour to get there due to rush hour. You know, so make sure you do all that kind of research beforehand and you know uh, 
to leave at the right time. Uh, two, any research you can do about the company position. You know, Google, basically, Google is your friend here. See what you can learn about the company. Is there any recent news that you might talk about in the interview? Uh, that, that shows that you're, first of all, an intelligent person, <laughs> uh, but also that you're, uh, what in the world happened there? Uh, that you're interested enough in the company to learn more about that big picture. Um, yeah, come up with some questions to ask them. Now, this is a big one. A lot of uh, interviews will end with something like, hey, is there any questions you have for us? And you don't want to say, nope, <laughs> I can't think of any. It just makes you look unprepared, makes it look like you're not treating this very seriously. So having at least a couple of questions good to go, you know, again, it's a reason to do the research. You know, if you read about them in the news, if there's a news article, you know, I wouldn't bring up something negative. <laughs> but, you know, if they're in the news and kind of a flattering thing, uh, you could bring that up and ask them about it. Uh, she recommends you could ask them about the next steps you know, to the interview process. That'd be fine. And, you know, what does it take to get ahead in your company? You know, anything like that is, is good. You know, of course, practicing with a friend and bringing a hard copy of the resume. In other words, a printed out copy. Uh, a good idea for a number of reasons. Uh, one, though, is sometimes you just have these brain farts. You know, if this ever happens to you, if somebody asks you an obvious question, <laughs> you know the answer, but for some reason at that moment, just your brain doesn't work. Uh, you forget, you get kind of nervous. And so having the resume there with you is, is nice because if that does happen, you can just quickly look down and, and see what it is. And <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> you know, thankfully, I'm, I'm glad I brought this thing. <sighs> okay, what to wear? Uh, well, you should definitely wear jeans or cargo shorts and sandals. No. Uh, she's right. I mean, you want to wear business professional clothes, and there's lots of examples. Of this this is what you want to wear. The suit and the tie, the uh, let's see, subtle makeup, skirt and dress of appropriate length. You basically, just look at the pictures uh, is the way to go. And, and some people get nervous about this because they say this will be very expensive. Now, you know, I don't have enough money. Uh, to buy the, these kinds of clothes, but just just in my experience, you'd be surprised. You know, you know if you go to TJ Maxx, let's say, or, or Burlington Coat Factory, or uh, uh, Ross, if you got one of those, <laughs> or of course, a, you know, a thrift store, uh, Savers, you know, places like that, you'll often find that you can get very nice, formal, basically what I'm wearing, for a lot cheaper than you would uh, just buying a nice, uh, you know, designer shirt and jeans. You know, I've seen people spend more money on a pair of jeans uh, than I spent on this, this suit I'm wearing right now. This is not an expensive, might, might look <laughs> like it cost a million bucks. <laughs> You're probably dreaming there. Uh, but it was not very expensive at all. You know, you, you can go to, you know, like that Ross store or TJ Maxx, and you can often get a shirt and tie set for like 10 bucks, brand new. And, uh, you know, it looks great. And, pe you know, that's all you need. Uh, some other interviewing tips, uh, yeah, turning off the phone, <laughs> being nice to everybody, yes. Uh, th the three, third one's a big one, so really listening to what they're telling you, really trying to pay attention to them, you know, don't just, uh, you know, ignore and just give a different answer than what they're expecting, and it's certainly okay if you don't know the answer, you need to think about it for a little bit, I mean, just tell them that, uh, now let me think about that a little, <laughs> for a little while, hmm. You know, that's okay. You know, the point is not to have, like, rapid-fire responses. Uh, and then, like she said it earlier, uh, you could ask, what are the next steps from here? You know, that sort of thing is fine. Now, I, I wanted to include this just because I imagine it would be very useful in these times. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of companies that aren't doing the face-to-face -face interviews. Uh, instead, they want to do a phone interview or something like Zoom, uh, Skype, you know, something along those lines. Uh, so how is that different? Is that different than a face-to-face -face interview? And I think Pierce is right in that you really sh shouldn't treat it differently. So even if it's on the phone, uh, still dress the part, you know, still put on the tie and, and whatever. Uh, just because it will make you more confident, you'll feel more comfortable, you'll feel more professional. Uh, so it's good advice. Uh, making sure everything works, you know, especially if it's a Zoom type situation, you know, make sure the camera's working. Make sure that the microphone is working. 
and then thinking about the background, do you want to have uh, dogs and cats running around back there? Uh, or, you know, mess garbage or something in the back of the picture? Probably not. Uh, so I try to find a space in the house, or if you have to go to some other place, you know, find a place where it's quiet, uh, where it looks nice, <laughs> and definitely don't have a, uh, you know, Facebook open or something like that. That would be a big distraction. And then some other just gold. I mean, stuff is worth its weight in gold. Uh, I mean, this, this business with the thank you notes, thank you emails. I mean, I can just say from personal experience, number one got me this job. Uh, you know, I don't know what the other applicants were doing for this professor gig, <laughs> but, but, you know, I'd applied a couple of jobs before this and really didn't get very far. Uh, but when St. Cloud State, you know, I did the campus tour and the campus interview, and I made darn double sure uh, when I got back home, I sent them a nice thank you note, all the people I'd met, you know, told them how much I enjoyed meeting them and, you know, this sort of thing. And it wasn't long, just a couple sentences. Uh, but I really think that made a good impression. And it really showed I was, you know, cared about the job. I really wanted the job. <laughs> I was trying to be polite and friendly. <laughs> and, you know, most people would probably rather work with somebody who's friendly uh, than somebody who's not, you know, and thoughtful. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, two, yeah, give it some time. Don't just call them up you know, after the interview and, and keep uh, pestering them. You know, it could take a while before for them to get back to you. That's perfectly normal. Just relax. Uh, and even if they do get back to you and offer you the job, you might not want to just say yes right away. You might want to say, uh, "That's you know, I'm very flattered. I thank you. I'm very honored. But... I'm just wondering, can I get a little time to think about it? You know, can I call you back tomorrow and let you know? <laughs> uh, and, so, you know, that's it, it kind of shows that you might have some other offers on the table, so it might actually, you know, get you a better offer from them. Uh, but at the very least, it sort of shows you're not desperate for the job, right? Uh, you've got some other opportunities. You know, you, you got it together. Uh, four, don't be afraid to ask about salary benefits. Yes, all this good stuff. You don't want to waste anybody's time that way. In asking for an offer letter, so you basically tell them that you would like it in writing. This is Pierce is the first person I've seen to recommend something like that, but you know, it does make sense. You know, say I like to look at the offer letter. You know, just get everything uh, spelled out for me so I can you know make my decision. Uh, she says that they're always happy to do that. And I'm not really familiar with it, <laughs> so uh, go for it, I guess. All right, and then finally, just what do you do if you get the, you know, you've done the interview, uh, you got the job, you want to make that first impression at the job, you know, day one. Uh, so all of this advice is very good. Uh, showing up early, dressing again. You always want to, if you're not sure wh what to wear in general, uh, be a little bit more formal. <laughs> so err on the side of being too formal rather than too informal. You know, it's better to show up in a suit and tie and find out, well, I didn't really have to wear the, the suit and tie. Probably could have just worn a nice polo. Uh, that's better than showing up in the, uh, you know, shorts and sandals and everybody's in a suit and tie, and then you really uh, feel out of place. You know, so again, err on the side of formality. Uh, bringing all the documents you might need, especially on day one, you're probably filling out, like, human resources stuff, stuff to do with your retirement package, your benefits, so you want to have that handy. Uh, you want to kind of get that part over with, basically. And then again, being friendly and sociable. You know, they might ask you if you're new, you're, you're the new person. They might say, hey, would you like to go to lunch with us? Uh, or we'd like to show you around uh, town or whatever. So she says, Pierce says, yeah, go ahead and go unless, if, if you possibly can, I guess. It's better to be friendly and go ahead and go to lunch with them. Uh, even if you don't really want to... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you might be a little nervous this first day. It uh, might be a lot to take in, but it, it's probably good advice just to go ahead and, you know, again, uh, even if you brought your own lunch or you made plans with some friends or something, uh, don't forget, you know, these are the people that you'll be working with. Uh, so it's probably pretty good advice. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over some of this just because we kind of covered it already. Uh, but should you include, these are just frequently asked questions I get year after year from students they'll ask me about the resume and do they need to put high school on the resume and, and I always say no uh, because the college will trump the uh, high school 
Uh, two, what if I have a lot of experience? Again, this kind of comes back to the position. It's different when you're applying for a senior level position. That's a whole different ball game uh, than what we're talking about here. Uh, you know, we're talking about that first job, that first step in a career. Um, uh, so you, uh, in, you know, in those cases, you generally do want to emphasize the education uh, over the experience. Um, now, again, though, if it's just like a senior level thing, you would, first of all, you'd probably have a lot more than just one page. You know, you'd be listing a lot of experience and, and all that. But again, I'm not really going to go into it here since that's a different topic. Uh, a related question, though, to number two is what if you have a lot of experience, but it's in a different industry or a different job? And to that, I say maybe a, some of it at least, uh, because if nothing else, it shows that you can hold down a job, that you're reliable. You know, I've heard a lot of these, you'd be surprised. You know, if you know somebody in human resources, talk to them about this. Uh, but what I've heard, not just from uh, you know human, human resources people here, but from uh, all over... <laughs> <laughs> of the world, basically. Uh, they say that one of their big concerns is just, will the person show up on time? You know, will they come to work and, you know, not be quitting on, like, day two because <laughs> they got bored? <laughs> uh, so if nothing else, you know, if you worked at, let's just say it was like you worked at Wendy's for four years while you're in college, and say, well, Wendy's, I, I worked at Wendy's, that has nothing to do with this job I want, you know, working at this uh, television studio. But, you know, if, especially if you don't have a lot of other experience, at least it does show you're reliable. You know, you, you didn't get fired. <laughs> you know, you showed up and you got some references. Uh, so that's a lot more valuable than you might think. Uh, three, what if I have big gaps on the resume? All right, so some people, they, they, you know, they get out of school, they have a baby, you know, whatever the case may be. You might have a year or two, maybe even five years where there's no education or work going on. Uh, I don't, you know, people ask me this. I don't really know what they, what else you can do other than just, you know, if it comes, I guess if it comes up in an interview, you can just simply explain it. Uh, I wouldn't try to hide it somehow. You know, the last thing you want to do on any of your resume or application packages is lie or be dishonest about something. Uh, I don't really know what, what the concern is there. You know, things will, you know, especially if you're recently graduated, that's going to be the, uh, the big thing, not that you took two years in between or something. Uh, and then should I include languages? Uh, you know, a lot of people these days, they, they uh, know, you know maybe three, two, three, maybe even dozens of languages. So they want to ask, they want to know, should I put a little section there somewhere that says languages and just rattles off you know, a big list of languages? You know, and again, it's 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 great. Okay, first of all, it's if you can speak multiple languages, let's say that's a big asset. So it should definitely be on there somewhere. Uh, but my question is, you, you have to make sure that there's more detail because uh, it's kind of like that guitar example uh, from before. You know, does it mean that you, if I just say Spanish, does that mean I can speak it enough to like ask, where's the bathroom? <laughs> like navigate a restaurant menu? Uh, or does it mean I'm like really fluent and I can carry on a professional, even an academic discussion in Spanish totally? and read and write it at a you know college level uh, so you want to you know provide a little bit of detail so they know what what you mean just putting spanish by itself with no description or context is not ideal uh, but it's even better you know if again if you can be a little bit more if you can be detailed to the point where you're saying like with that right place example uh, where you could add a line about you were tutoring students in the right place and in some of them were Spanish speakers and you you did your con, you did your consult in Spanish, that's you know pretty impressive. I mean that to me really does. Yes, you really know Spanish in a way that's going to be useful in a business professional context, not just you know where's the bathroom. <laughs> We're like yeah, I took some Spanish in high school. I, I probably I barely. I think I know like La Cucaracha. <laughs> so you know I uh, I'm not equipped uh, to go to Spain and you know have a business meeting in Spanish. Not not going to happen. All right, well, thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please do ask a question. Ask a comment. Uh, did I say? <laughs> uh, please make a comment or ask a question or, I guess, a pregunta. You know, I seem to remember that from Spanish classes. But, but anyway, uh, again, hope you enjoyed this and see you next time.